good afternoon everyone on behalf of deva preservation services private limited we are welcoming you all attendees for the international webinar on manufacturing cost reduction through elimination of rippers and rivers for machine shops fabrication yards and shipyards this is the agenda for today's webinar for the first few minutes we spend on registration timing so uh, the webinar will have hsm minute and a brief introduction about the presenters an introduction about this uh, webinar then common conversion issues on the shipyards machine shop we will give small introduction about to that later we will be looking into the traditional solution and its limitations then a later part will be with low cost and technologically advanced solutions then the end of the session will be with webinar will be with integrated solutions provided by the observations and followed by the q and a session and feedback the overall uh, agenda will be uh, concluded within 90 minutes from now hsa minute during this pandemic situation we need to take care of our mental health also so that is the safety minute for the day so how we can achieve this so when we have time idle or alone we are drowning into the social media applications so we need to have a balanced time for the media and our timing and also the second step will be the physical distancing doesn't mean that we are alone we can be engaged with people through a uh, lot of social connecting uh, applications or that so we can be connected with everyone and we are not alone in this situation the global world is facing the same issue so we have to be in touch with everyone who needs mental support give them the positive words to them to be safe and convince them and we also to be convinced that it is okay to be not okay for certain point of time it's okay to be not okay then we have to have some physical activities also to keep our body health, health condition in a good condition talk to people who are in stress to take care of the people around you when we take care of the people around us the people around us will take care of us okay then about the presenters the today session will be by the mr uh, sengodan vasudevan who is the director of this organization he has 70 uh, 38 years of professional experience in which 13 years he spent in nuclear equipment technology development and manufacturing and he spent 3 years in infrastructure projects like water treatment and semi later the past 22 years is in with oil and gas industry for offshore projects then the other presenter will be is krishna arambu she is the business development manager for this organization and she has been a lecturer and researcher in the biomedical industry with a passion for chemistry she influenced by the technology of developments in the corrosion chemistry and ventured into deva preservation services before 5 years and currently she is steering the sales and marketing team as business development manager now i hand over the session to krishna to carry over the session krishna please carry on yes thank you mr mano good afternoon ladies and gentlemen yeah the focus of our today's webinar will be on achieving cost reduction in the context of machine shops fabrication and testing yards and shipyards yeah so to begin with let me shed some light on how to address it um our first task would be to identify the current problems during the manufacturing process So first of all there is a lack of an assured preventive solution which allows rust corrosion oxidation and deterioration to develop. 
So we must understand that, yeah? The lack of an assured preventive solution. And the second issue, the more the number of steps and the longer the processes involved, there's going to be the higher probability of repair rework during in-process manufacturing, transportation, storage, even issues extending into the warranty period. Yeah. And so definitely we need to address, do a problem solving of the above issues. Okay. And primarily when we look at problem solving, uh, first of all, we must have a customized engineer technology based solution to tackle our problem one. And secondly, the technology solutions must be able to optimize the production process, saving us the time, the dollars, and above all, repair and rework. Okay. Now just let's look at some of the uh, common corrosion issues. Yeah. Um, looking at some of the common corrosion issues, we have raw materials. Uh, at, at a stage. Yeah, so during this, uh, in the raw material stage, what we often encounter is that rust is commonly seen during the transportation and storage phases. Uh, and this is actually an in-between waiting uh, period, yeah? Uh, the stage of in-process manufacturing we have various activities like casting, turning, milling operations, and even drilling operations, yeah? So these are intermittent stages without protection can give way for rust and corrosion. So here we see that the main culprit here is exposure to weather and environmental factors. Uh, next in the fabrication stage, the issues that we encounter involves activities such as welding. For example, if you look at the hull blocks and piping spools, all requiring weld edge preparation. Yeah, and this is carried out. Uh, when this is carried out, you find that there is a lot of exposure to weather. And here you find that the main culprit is again contamination. Okay. Uh, looking at assembly stage, uh, here too, the deterioration is seen, all arising resultant of contamination with carbon dust. Yeah, uh, when you actually put parts together in the testing, uh, activities such as hydro test, leak test, all these testings that is being carried out, you need to ensure that there is something, some additive that can prevent rust is also incorporated. Otherwise, the testing procedures may end up with having some repair and rework. Okay. Then looking at commissioning, yes, when fluids are introduced into systems, side by side, you need to ensure that there are some protectives also being introduced. Yeah. Uh, so in these various stages, we see that definitely there is a very high chance or uh, corrosion is a problem. And um, in the stages of transportation and storage, now this can be near or quite far away. Sometimes storages can be like uh, outdoor, open environment and, and a lot of weather factors. And of course the contamination as well from other rusted parts will all play into uh, 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 an issue that we need to deal with, yeah? So here's highlighting some of the pictures uh, through these pictures to see, you know, these are the common kind of things that you all see around in your uh, work related everyday activities, yeah, in terms of raw materials, in terms of fabrication activities, here yeah, uh, something like uh, uh, contamination, rust, and, and that leads to rusting. Yeah, here showing all uh, tr during transportation what is expected. And transportation or uh, transportation is something like, you know, even uh, when you transport far away, far away in container kind of. Uh, situations where the containers do carry some amount of uh, rust particles uh, because of the fact that they are also metallic and, and pain may go off over a period of time and so on. Okay, um, traditional solutions, yeah. Rust preventive methods, they are not new for in-process engineers and testing and commissioning engineers. They're not new at all. We totally agree and accept the fact that uh, preventive solutions have been around for ages, yeah? And traditionally, we attack it as external uh, protectives and internal protectives. 
And this is what we see at the end of the day, despite of using traditional solutions. Yeah. Um, when you talk about external, we're referring to largely like oils, fish oils, grease, anything other than coating that's applied on the external. And then for internals, you do have like nitrogen purging or filling. Even uh, there are times when people use desiccants such as silica gel and charcoals as well. And yet corrosion happens, yeah? That, that nightmare still happens, okay? And um, this is when, you know, people sit and worry and think that when they have to open up their pockets and spend dollars to rectify, uh, to repair, to do reworks, that's when people worry about what is going on with the, with the protection system that they had applied. And now, uh, I just want to remind our 4G and 5G um, uh, engineers, we need to remember that there's nothing wrong with the traditional methods, but they come with a lot of limitation and drawback. Yeah. So this is where we need to look at uh, why we need to move into something that is more trustworthy, something that provides you assurance and so on. Okay. So um, the first limitation that I want to bring about is that most of these traditional methods, they actually only have a checklist of actions. That means they are not result oriented, which again, you know, you would have a technician uh, putting a tick against a check sheet. But at the end of the day, when you remove that grease from the surface of the metal, you will, you will find that the corrosion just getting expanded. Yeah. So it is not result oriented. And the second drawback is that many, many a time, most of these methods, they do not have a method to monitor. So there is no assurance provided to, you know, to, um, to the manufacturer, to the owner, to the fabrication yard that corrosion is not happening. Yeah. Okay. And I can tell you nine out of 10 cases where uh, corrosion sets in is because nature takes over. Okay. Um, Nature takes over, so you have, uh, you know, at some point humidity levels changing. You have at some, some point day and night where there is evaporation and condensation depending upon the temperature. And, and all these, when you have oxygen, when you have moisture, when you all humidity around, nature just takes over. Yeah. And that's, that is why all these traditional preservation methods or protection. Uh, that, that has been in use, like we talked about the grease for the external or even nitrogen purging, use of silica gel, all these, they tend to fail because uh, of these limitations and drawbacks. Yeah. Let's look at uh, which is our focus today. Our focus today being low cost, technologically advanced solutions. So uh, my good friends, why do we need this low cost, technologically advanced solution? See, times are so bad, right? Uh, despite of oil prices falling sometime in 20, uh, 2013, 14, 15, 16, we've experienced that bit. We've, uh, you know, oil companies have come out of it. They've, they've, come, they've looked at how to uh, come up with various sustainable forms in which they can carry on with their business activities and so on. But unfortunately, again, we are drawn down, uh, sunk and pulled downwards uh, due to this pandemic, yeah? So it becomes, it looks like there is an increasing requirement and a need to have something which we can trust at the same time. It's not going to be burning a hole in our pockets. So that's when um, these low cost and technologically advanced solution comes in. For a long time, we know that, we know that there's been a lot of advocacy in terms of um, uh, need to have processes in place to substantiate corporate ESGs, you know, uh, where we are talking about lowering of carbon footprint, we are talking about optimizing uh, procedures in production lines and processes. So all these aspects has become a need of the hour even more than before. Yeah. Okay. So that's when we, we really would like to uh, bring into y'all these different types of technology based solutions, which are definitely going to be an edge for today's time. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, dividing the, these technologies into two different levels. First, we look at the restoration technologies and then the preservation or the protection technologies. 
And uh, looking at the restoration technologies, we're looking at rust removal, neutralizing, because yeah, there comes now is a time when, you know, previously a lot of preventive action was not taken and you need to remove rust, yeah? Or you need to carry out pickling and passivation process. Uh, so what are the solutions that is going to be available, which is going to be safe for the metal, which is going to be safe for human beings like you and me, who's going to be doing the activities there and as well as safe for nature, yeah? So we, we look at some of those technologies as well. Then we do have rust converter technology. We are here talking about converting the oxide components into hydrophobic um, agents, wherein which the surface does not react to, to any type of liquid, in fact, yeah? So uh, there's gonna be rust converter technologies for efficiency of restoration. Then there's, uh, we need to look at descaling activities as well for restoring the surface of the metal. Uh, we're looking at um, solutions where in which probably because of scales, uh, different types of uh, silicates and all on the surface, there is uh, scaling happening and uh, effective ways in which scaling can be removed, just the scale without affecting or reducing our metal. Okay. Uh, pipe internal linings are the other type of restoration technologies where you find, you know, uh, pipe being eaten away or there are areas where metal is very frail, yeah. So you have probably pipe, in, pipe within a pipe kind of uh, internal linings that would be required. Looking at protection technologies that, uh, that is available in today's market, we have primarily we have vapor corrosion inhibitor technologies. Uh, we look at some of them that, uh, that is specifically um, uh, produced for DEVA and sold by DEVA, uh, which are called as advanced vapor corrosion inhibitors. Then we do have corrosion inhibitors in terms of seawater protection and portable water system protection. Yeah? At the end of the day, we don't want uh, corrosion inhibitors that could be harmful to be taken in internal, internally. So we look at those solutions as well that is going to be safe um, uh, safe, yeah. Uh, then we do have other preservation technologies like the mold and mildew remover and preventer, um, which is largely for deterioration areas, uh, like as in for commissioning activities. Then um, we look at single compound polyurethane coating systems. So uh, protection technologies also covers coating systems where in which the coatings tend to last much more longer. And then you have VCI, vapor corrosion inhibitor related paint coating. So which means that even if you, even if paint goes away, uh, it is still uh, protection is enabled because it's got a vapor coating layer beneath the paint. So here's highlighting some of the preservation solutions for structural mechanical piping and equipments. What we have is for internal, indoors and outdoor areas, we've got, uh, so this is largely for external. So indoor and outdoor areas, we have VCI O-Shield 80 series, which is like 80, which is a wax coat, 82, which is an oil coat, uh, primarily for stainless steel, um, 87, which is specific for viral protection. Then we do have Dave VCI Eco Glossy, which is a transparent, it, you can call it a paint coating, but it's an invisible coating of VCI vapor corrosion inhibitor there. Um, wire ropes, yes, I mentioned O-Shield 87, part of the 80 series. Uh, we do have the VCI paper and plastics and even bags where in which you can just put in those um, bare metal parts and components and that should be able to protect it until you zip open it and start using, yeah? Or, or involve it in part of your in-process um, uh, manufacturing process. Then uh, VCI paint coatings, if that's an area that you currently have, are using coatings or paints, then VCI Fast Cure would be a recommendation. VCI Eco Coat would be another recommendation of coating system. And then you've got polyurethane coating systems as well. Uh, yeah, and for areas where they are exposed to high temperature, there's a S2000 uh, paint coat there. Then, um, yeah, uh, these are like the chemicals that we talked about uh, for restoration for corroded areas. So it's like rust remover, rust converter, descaler. In the manufacturing process, directly we do have 
use of machining solutions, uh, cutting fluid solutions, uh, which have a few CVs, uh, depending upon the type of machining being done. And as well as uh, in the manufacturing process, uh, a lot of degreasing solutions, which is water-based as well as oil-based. And of course, for um, storage and shipping, we do have got for wooden crates, we have uh, wood pro for containers. Uh, we do have auto aerosols um, uh, for fabrics. We do have wooden fabrics. We do have Dave Mulgard 301. Then there's also special applications like peel, flange dots, eco germicil, eco cleaner. So these are actually uh, more appropriate in terms of uh, requirement and need. Yeah. So looking at the internal solutions, like you can see based on um, non-oil based system or oil based system, or is it an electrical or instrumentation system? So roughly these are the solutions. So as we go along, uh, I, I'm not going to elaborate uh, to save time, but at the same time, like, you know, the headers clearly give you an indication of where they could be used. And for more, you could just drop us an email and we'll be more than happy to address it. Yeah. Okay. Machining solutions. So because uh, machining is one of the uh, first steps in, in uh, manufacturing process. So we're looking at process optimization here. Yeah. We're looking at like if you were to use uh, uh, general coolants that's available, uh, which doesn't have vapor corrosion inhibitor, which is a way to reduce rusting or corrosion or deterioration. Um, if, you were, if you were not using, you would have to still, after the machine, the, you have to apply protective oil on the machining, you have to carry out degreasing activity, you have to still again apply the protective oil, then you have to package it up, yeah? But if looking at this, uh, using the W, um, the machining solution W10, W12, uh, and the O15 solution, uh, you wouldn't have to go to at each step if you're using this particular coolant, which comes with the vapor corrosion inhibitor within it. None of these, but other, after you, you've got the part, uh, you know, you can straight away go into packaging. Or if you happen to be machining without these solutions, uh, then you could, at the degreasing stage, you could use OD53 um, or the WD20 series, and then you could package, yeah? So you can see that you can, if you were to use the coolant from the very beginning, then you straight away go to uh, the last step of packaging. You don't have to use degreasers and so on, but otherwise you would be uh, using, depending upon which step you would, your preference of, uh, of these products would be, okay? So there is a process optimization as you see it here. And talking a bit more on what are these VCI coolants, like Sandvik is one of our largest buyer and user of these coolants. And they have um, uh, put down in oil and gas journals that they have managed to increase tool life by 36%. And um, they've also found that there is an increase in machine utilization rate for a much more longer period. Um, and it can prevent parts from undergoing flash rust uh, during the process itself, yeah? So this is what was uh, informed by Sandwick and we have that testimonial by them, which we could provide to you all uh, through an email again, yes. And during this process, we do have use of degreasers. This one here showing how the performance of a oil degreaser 53. Uh, and as you can see, it's a two in one solution. Yeah. So it highlighted here in the yellow is it's the benefit of it. So it's a two in one solution that it acts as a degreaser at the same time. It provides the protective, uh, which is vapor, vapor corrosion inhibitor. Uh, so you don't have to add any additional preservative. Uh, after the degreasing, and this prevents the parts against every type of flash rust. Similarly, for the water degreaser of the 20 CVs, uh, it's again a two-in-one solution, and you can see that um, you don't need to add a protective or, or a preservative after the degreasing is being done. Okay, packaging solutions are very, very widely used, uh, I must say. And um, it's been found to be so effective, like this example here, uh, we found that this particular uh, brake disc 
which was preserved uh, one time. And it happens now, it's like in, on 28th Jan 2020, when it was examined, it was found to be in this condition without a speck of rust. So it's like for the last 20 years with one time application uh, of a paper wrap, a VCI based paper wrap just around um, the brake disc has managed to protect it against rusting. Yeah. So that's the kind of cost effectiveness we are looking at. Yeah, uh, we do have the VCI bags, as you can see it here for, um, for Mercedes-Benz. Uh, so this can be largely used for parts when doing uh, and sub-assembly of packaging, like for example, as in valves. Um, uh, protection uh, provides both uh, protection against corrosion of ferrous component as well as non-ferrous metals as well. And of course, these VCI bags, they are not just having the uh, vapor corrosion inhibitor within them. They come with anti-UV resins. So even if it's placed outside on the deck areas and all for a period of time, it is capable of protecting uh, the internal, uh, the metal, because it's an anti-UV plastic. And then of course, it is, it is made up of anti-flame uh, retardant material. Uh, VCI paper, we do have plain paper, we do have plasticized paper. Uh, there's what we call as a woven paper as well for protecting sharper components. Um, so these, uh, as you saw in the previous paper, uh, previous page, sorry, with just that um, a paper wrapped around the brake disc, you saw that it was being protected for 20 years, right? So this is another uh, another area where in which just either by the use of a plain paper, how uh, it can effectively ensure vapor corrosion, the presence of uh, vapor corrosion inhibitor ions to protect a bare metal surface, yeah? So, and uh, using paper, it can also be helpful in terms of uh, uh, in areas and countries where there is a lot of condensation related problems like, you know, day and night uh, temperature changes and resultant, resulting in condensation. Um, so, um, so you can see paper as a good and effective packaging solution. You can see various types of plastics, including bubble film. Yeah. So you can see the bubble film is, is commonly used for, um, very critical sharp edge parts as well. And, and, uh, these bubble films, you would, when once wrapped around, uh, these, uh, components, you would be able, be able to even see what component is being wrapped, right? So uh, that's the benefit of using these different types of packaging solutions. Yeah, some examples for here for you all to see for long term, uh, we even have uh, plastic based ones, like the ones that you see here, it's a VCI based stretch film, uh, which is a see-through plastic and a VCI shrink film, which has of course uh, UV made up of plastic with UV resistance and flame retardant materials in it. Uh, yes, now uh, I would like to pass over this webinar to Mr. Vasu. So you could yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manu and uh, Ms. Christina. Thanks for both of you for the HSE Minute and also the initial startup introductions about the, the various technological solutions, the technologies available to help the machine shops, fabrication shops, and also the shipyards. Okay. And uh, before uh, proceeding on some more of the examples, just I would like to indicate that, uh, you know, summarize. What is the benefit we are expecting for all these participants at the end of this webinar is that we would like you to know that there are new technology solutions available with which you can completely eliminate. Okay. 100% of the repair and corrosion huh? during the period of the machining, during the period of fabrication, assembly, transportation, and including the warranty period. As a result, this one, with the solutions, what we are, uh, the, these technologies, okay, there are a set of technologies, and based on these technologies, there are a large number of products with the appropriate use of this set. Huh? 
we will be or you will be able to achieve the end results wherein eh? your machine departs okay had never had a complaint of rust or corrosion from the client or your uh, machine shops never had to reject any of the parts similarly your warehouse will never have to reject any of the raw materials which are purchased and stored uh, while awaiting for the ma further manufacturing processes like this you will be able to completely eliminate the rust and the corrosion related uh, you know reworks and repairs okay the second you would be able to achieve the zero warranty cost eh? the cost due to the repair and rework initiated by the corrosion and finally the third and most important thing as uh, krishna highlighted is that process uh, optimization eh? because currently the various activities like selection of the cutting fluids selection of the packaging materials selection of the transportation packaging okay like this they are being handled in a individual manner wherein uh, you know the they are uh, what i would say that piecemeal approach and as a result uh, the client is made to or required to do or every one of you are required to do additional stages of the manufacturing okay and this is costing you both time and money and uh, with this uh, presentations we would like to highlight to you how we would like to show to you how as a team we are able to offer you the opportunity for optimizing your manufacturing processes okay that way you can reduce the number of stages involved in the your whole process of manufacturing from the raw material raw material to the delivery all this we will be using this with this uh, brief summary of the previous discussion i would like to move into the examples of the fabrication solutions what we you know using those advanced technologies which you, could help you so this is the for protecting the fine mesh surfaces and the gasket faces okay this is the liquid which is uh, applied in the form of the liquid and immediately in about 5 minutes it will dry up to form a peelable okay protective layer like this this is suitable for both indoor and outdoor because and also it is uv resistant okay and uh, this will ensure that whenever you would like to access that machined surface or the protected surface eh, the surface is available in the rust free condition as shown in the various examples here and uh, similarly uh, the other type of the uh, solution available for protecting the gasket faces of the flanges uh, during the hydroblasting and during also the testing pressure testing uh, to prevent those gasket surfaces from getting scratched uh, we have got that the flange dots are available and uh, these can be used to ensure that the gasket faces remain rust free and also damage free during the entire fabrication and the assembly processes and of course at the time of the assembly when the permanent gaskets or the temporary gaskets are being placed this uh, part is removed and this uh, tag is to show that such an external material is available which is to be removed during the assembly stage now this is an interesting area wherein we could show how uh, we could help to reduce the significant time and cost associated with the hydro test activities carried out either for the spool stages or for the assembly stages as we know in the traditional method for us to ensure that the piping is in good condition or similarly the whole system is in a good condition you know uh, equipments connected with the piping are in a good condition once the hydro test is done we are we need to achieve complete draining of the water in, from inside okay so that there is no water retention point and to also to achieve that we used to do the drying aspect of it okay so that we use the hot air blow drying and even as we many of our, the people who are in this manufacturing industry are aware the hot air blow drying also had not dried the removed the water 100% and there have been cases of the water pockets remaining inside the piping leading to the continued corrosion and after this drying 
to ensure that the internal of the piping is not started to rust. Eh? And another uh, internal preservation solution like nitrogen purging, this guy is being applied. Okay, so when compared to this type of the set of activities, eh, just by adding this the VC water shield 25, which is an advanced uh, VC solution, eh, we will be able to completely eliminate these additional stages. Eh. So once using this uh, additive two percent solution, the hydro test is done. Eh, we have do that whatever the normal draining is done then after that just okay close the ends of the piping and close here keep the system sealed because with this additive the water is no more corrosive it has become a protective liquid as a result this entire piping will remain protected uh, for okay years to come or months and years to come until the whole system is put in for operation when the operating fluids enter and at that point of time also it doesn't get any reaction with the operating fluids and thereby it gets uh, you know carried away by the initial uh, uh, process fluid by the initial process fluid and this is uh, a sample what has been of uh, the testing arrangements what has been done using the additive of this uh, ws25 and this particular uh, 25 even after draining it provides both the immersed surface protection as also the aerated surface protection by forming a monomolecular layer of protections okay and uh, when compared to the other traditional methods wherein you will have a limited period of the preservation with this protection you don't have to do continuous monitoring like in the case of the nitrogen purging and all instead uh, you just feel uh, do the complete the test seal the ends and then leave it for the until it is put to use. This particular activity can save a significant cost for the topside model construction contractors because you don't have to install the low point drain in all the locations. That way you are able to eliminate the need for the additional welding and additional works of, of the low point drains. And this is also quite for, you know helpful for the operators for the client because they have got less leakage points. So like this, the additive use of this WS25 uh, in the hydro test help to say, assist the, both the client as also the manufacturer. And uh, similarly, coming to the assembly solutions. Okay. For example, during the assembly stage, it is quite common for us to see the stainless steel piping vessels being contaminated and then localized uh, rusting happens as if it's a carbon steel and this normally leads to a significant requirement for the pickling and passivation the traditional method of pickling and passivation the problem is that these surfaces you know the residual contamination can still pop up after three months six months like this and cause claim and repair rework during the warranty period at a quite a prohibitive cost to prevent that what we have got is a set of these uh, solutions yeah, called as the J Bickling compound, which is to remove the contaminations, only the iron oxide without damaging the chromium oxide layer. And after that, the surface gets neutralized with the DVC water shield plus. And finally, we use the DVC Eco Glossy. This is a VC based paint coating, a water based paint coating, which will ensure that even if there are any residual you know contamination remains in the stainless steel which is invisible to the eyes eh? still uh, we are able to protect them from popping up and the stainless steel metal surface continue to remain in the same form okay and this particular product has been developed after you know one of our experience with one of our shipyards here wherein after the rust removal when we had used that oil based you know when some other product we had used which was, you know, oil, oily to touch the surface and they prefer to have a dry surface. And this product of this DVC Eco Glossy dries up very quickly and as a result, you are able to have a complete dry surface for the, on the surface of the stainless steel piping and the vessels. And the same product can also be applied, okay, for the aluminum, uh, you know, cable trays and other such applications any area wherein you have got a oxidation eh, and you want to 
show the parent metal in a visible condition at the same time you want to avoid the contamination or the oxidation this echo glossy will be an ideal solution okay. now coming to this external preservation of the equipments okay, on the bare metal parts okay, this day we see oil shield at series okay, is recommended because it forms a wax based anti product you know coating in this the advantage is that the base metal you know like the motor shafts or the pump shafts any base term uh, the material this is visible but because it is a wax based coating this can even be subjected to the outdoor conditions of rain and shine so in this 80 series as previously krishna was indicating we have got three resolutions 80 we are using recommending for the outdoor applications 82 for the indoor applications and 87 for the wire ropes this is a application for a sample during the assembly stage okay similarly when it comes to the compressors or the main engines or the you know other tanks containing the oils okay whether it's a lube oil or a hydraulic oil for those type of the internal preservation when the system is empty okay traditionally it's a problem because many of these oil based systems will not have the internal paint coating because this paint when it peels off can choke the filters and such kind of the unprotected one so tend to have the corrosion problem inside this so there we have got one solution called this uh, they we see oil shield 92 the major advantage of this particular product is that once we use this product for preserving the internals of any oil system whether it's a lube oil hydraulic oil okay or a diesel uh, or a fuel oil systems right? this only forms the invisible monomolecular layer coating like as exists as shown here you will be able to see the surface and you can monitor the protective efficiency using the corrosion monitoring coupon and finally when you want to add the fluid there is no need for any flushing because this particular protective is compatible with the various oil based product so that the client need not have to flush the system before he fills up there with the uh, product oil product so normally what we recommend is that once in the yards the fabrication yards the equipment is ready or the systems are ready if it's an oil based system therefore the empty system we would recommend to use this product so that you will never have a corrosion related client in these systems okay and this protects not only the piping it protects the tanks it protects the filters it protects the pumps the entire uh, equipments within this uh, system okay this is the one what we discussed earlier about the oil shield 87 for preserving the wire ropes especially this kind of the things will ensure that there is no internal corrosion eh, in the wire ropes because when the wire ropes are exposed to the rain and water okay the water can seep through the strands wire strands and uh, then it can so initiate the corrosion from the core and that is prevented and eliminated uh, with the use of this oil shield 87 because it can it penetrates the core and protect the wire rope from the center okay while the grease protects the external and another uh, you know area wherein the shipyards uh, and the fabrication yards currently using is a hydroblasting process uh, to prepare the surface for painting in while doing this uh, one of the major problems faced by a client is that once you do the hydroblasting you need to do the painting within about two hours time otherwise what happens the flash rust will come and if you go do uh, the painting on top of that the paint adhesion will get affected so as a result in uh, large vessels uh, the process always involve the hydroblasting painting then again hydroblasting painting like this the ink spots uh, and during this time when do the hydroblasting the painting team will be standby when painting is being done hydroblasting team will be standby like this there is a wastage of the resources eh? and also at any point of time after the hydroblasting if the paint availability is delayed then automatically flash rust comes again repair and rework of the hydroblasting happens eh? this can be eliminated by the use of the additive okay either if it's an internal we use the hydroblast water with the ws25 if not once you complete if it's an external surface eh, wherein the water is not collected and recycled once you do the hydroblast immediately spray the surface with the 
WS25 30% solution eh? and then this will ensure that you don't have to keep your paint team standby okay you can do the hydroblasting of the entire surface and then demobilize and start with your painting and the interesting thing is that the uh, WS25 the monomolecular layer film do not affect it doesn't affect the uh, paint or the addition eh? this has been also been tested and proven in the for the various paint systems okay so thereby you are able to eliminate the wastage of the resources with the use of this WS25 solution and also prevent the rework of the hydroblasting activities. Now after this assembly, the coming to the commissioning solutions, okay? as we know, when we do the commissioning, after this commissioning, okay, when we drain the systems uh, before the vessel or the equipment is sent for the, to the site for the operation, okay? okay, during that time, the empty spaces wherein we had introduced the fluids earlier, the problem of the corrosion starts then. Once such a system wherein commonly everybody is uh, facing the problem is wherever the seawater system. If the seawater system has been tested and commissioned in the yard, okay, when this is being, after that the water is drained and when this is being idle, you know, finally before the operation when it takes a few months, during that time the seawater piping gets corroded as also the uh, equipments like valves, and the filters, pumps, internals, like these items tend to be corroded. So the another area is that, you know, in the tankages, mm -hmm. wherein the clients are the, for doing the hydro test, they use the seawater okay, because of the huge volume required. And after the seawater, when it is dry, the chlorides on the bare metal, supposed to the internals of the walls, okay, that starts to corrode the tanks. Okay. In all such cases, okay, the use of uh, just a 500 ppm of the SWCA101, which is a very cost effective solution, will ensure that uh, the corrosion never happens and it reduces the rate of corrosion drastically to the extent of just 0.02 mm per year. So that means uh, by, by this one forms a monomer, the protective layer on, between the seawater and the parent metal and thereby it is able to decelerate the corrosion and with this rate of corrosion as we all know that the seawater even in direct contact with the uh, carbon steel in direct contact with the seawater can last for more than 100 years eh? so with that 3 mm corrosion elements. That means uh, the claim, the yacht or the fabricator will never get a claim during the warranty period. Okay, thereby you are assured that once you deliver the system, you will be free from any warranty claims. The same way, the other problem what we find is that when the portable water system is commissioned, okay, and uh, once if it is left, you know, there will always be residual water will be there in the tanks. And if it is left in the system, when it takes longer, then you will find that this type of the internal corrosion of the carbon steel bare metal happens, eh, leading to the brown water issue okay, when they start the operations. Okay. In order to prevent it, okay, there is a portable water corrosion inhibitor is there. This additive is meeting the MPA requirement for the drinking water applications. Okay. As a result, this is again a very low cost and very effective solution. Okay, With the initial dose will be 1000 ppm, but if it's a subsequent use, will reduce to 75 ppm level. By at that level, we are able to assure that the water is drinkable at the same time internally there is no corrosion and no claim from the claim for the problem on board of the vessels what has been supplied. The, similarly, the, another system wherein we recommend to do such an additive is the lube oil systems and the hydraulic oil systems. As we know, the lube oil and hydraulic oil wherein the oil is in contact with the metal surfaces, eh? we uh, rarely see the corrosion problems. Eh? But the corrosion problem comes in the two other locations of the aerated surfaces and also the tank bottoms wherein the uh, water condenses, the, you know, moist uh, air which is uh, breathed in and out uh, during the day uh, temperature variations. Eh? Those condensations eh, leading, uh, you know, at the tank bottom, 
settling down and then initiating the corrosion of the dank bottom. Similarly, the moisture air the, in the uh, vent, uh, okay, initiating the corrosion on the aerated surface above the oil film, oil level. And in these areas, the use of this oil guard plus, uh, which is compatible to the various, uh, you know, uh, the synthetic ones, oils. So this is able to protect the all the three phases. It protects from the air to the metal, oil to the metal, and also water to the metal. It is able to provide a multi-phase protection. And as you can see, such a kind of a, even after eight months of the preservation using such sort of product, eh, you can see the corrosion monitoring coupon shows zero speck of rust. Okay. And similarly, this additive also ensures that the Oil is in good condition, as you can see here. Even after six not six days eh, of this additive, the oil go, you know, the oil remains in the same condition without any impact, negative impact. Okay, so all these additives is able to protect the oil and the system. Okay, without interfering in the oil's properties. Okay, the another one. This is a common problem faced by the yacht shipyard mainly or the wherein when they after the commissioning of the diesel systems when the diesel is left inside the tanks for long the diesel gets uh, you know contaminated because of the sulfur reducing bacteria initiating the corrosion inside the tanks as also in the system this additive of this fuel guard uh, will able to ensure that the diesel remain usable and the tanks are remaining clean all the time thereby at any point of time when they are want to start the system the system is readily available to start eh, without any of the corrosion problems. Eh. Thereby, there will never be a warranty claim eh, to the client because of such uh, corrosion. Eh. Okay. And uh, you can, here also you can see we, after about 26 months of this additive, the uh, you know, fuel got the diesel still remained the same. But this particular condition happened in one of our projects, eh, even after about three to four months' time. Eh, the diesel turned like this, but here even after 26 months, diesel remain in the same condition. And this can be used in the IC engines uh, without interfering with the performance of the engine. Now, similarly, you know, uh, in the ENI systems, uh, wherein the liquid solutions are not allowed, we have got the vapor-based solutions. Uh, okay, here the are uh, using the advanced VCA. All the internals, whether it's a lighting feature, outdoor lighting feature, wherein the condensation, okay, inside the condensation of the lighting feature and the corresponding, you know, corrosion of the contacts. This is the new things which many of the clients and we also have faced in some of our projects, and that could be eliminated just by using a 50 cent worth of that emitter, okay, and uh, only, you know, one emitter is required for normally most of the, you know, junction boxes. And the lighting features for the large panels, uh, okay, will be eight pieces per meter cube. In that ratio, we'll be using these pieces. Okay? This ensures that internally there is never a corrosion related uh, problem, and thereby the panel is not losing its life. You are not required to repair or replace it during that. When it comes to the control panels, the same way the internal can be using the VC emitter panel 8. Yeah? Okay, this 8 represents that 1 meter cube. We have to use 8 pieces. Here also you can see such kind of the products being fixed. Uh, because in the control panel, you know, don't want to lose the, uh, leave the loose pieces like in the uh, terminal boxes. And where it is the switch gear, the contact cleaning, we have the JVC electro clean. This is able to clean the contacts and protect them without interfering in the electrical properties. So these type of solutions are recommended during the commissioning phase. Yeah? So that after the commissioning, the equipments and the systems are remaining in good conditions. Okay. And similarly, the warehouse or the storage spaces on board the vessel to ensure that the spares which are stored there, okay, when the air condition is not ready, to ensure that these are not rusting and corroding, Okay, the aerosol, auto aerosol is recommended. This product's big advantage is that this, uh, you know, preserves the, discharges the uh, advanced VC 
spray into the volume, then the entire volume, all the product within this volume gets to serve. Okay? And thereby, the spats are remaining in the good condition both during whatever so you supply for the commission. And then there will be no need for a replacement uh, during the warranty period. Okay? And in some of the areas, uh, you know, their clients preferred, uh, you know, not to use the moisture absorbers. Okay? okay. And in most of the cases, particularly this one, we recommend along with the motor applications because there the motor windings, yeah, you know, that the moisture absorption can cause the problem. Even though when if you are using the VC based protection, the VC based protection protects the metal surfaces, the non metal surfaces gets protected with the red desiccants. This will change the color once it's saturated, so you can know when to replace it. Okay. And uh, once the, you know, fabrication is complete, assembly is complete, the commissioning is complete, the asset is ready for transportation to the final operating locations. Okay. As we know, some of the cases, you know, this can take months of the sea transport. Okay. And during this period, or similarly, there, where there is a land transportation in large countries, okay? there again, uh, it can take weeks and months. Okay? And ensure that during this period, the equipment what you have supplied is in a good condition without any damage. There are various, uh, you know, transportation solutions also available so that the equipment or the product when it is received at the client's end, okay? there is no repair or river clients associated with that. For that, one of the products widely used is that they we see a shrink food and uh, this is able to withstand tough weather conditions. Okay, for example, in one of the drilling rigs, it could uh, withstood even about 45 knots of the wind velocity, it could uh, withstand. Okay. And uh, this particular material is both UV resistant and flame retardant. So even accidentally somebody, you know, throws uh, you know, during the transportation, any fire hazard is there nearby. Okay, this doesn't catch fire and then doesn't cause the damage. So because it's flame retardant, it tend to shrink and then it will put up the fire. Okay, another type of the application for the transportation solution is that they we see wood probe. This is uh, wherever the products are being transported within the wooden boxes. Eh? Okay, many of the equipments are and here instead of applying the preservatives on the equipment, you can just apply in the wooden box internal. Eh? This is the liquid. Then once it is applied and then closed, okay, this is able to protect it, uh, the parts. Eh? And this is to show a comparative evaluation of the, without wood pro, how the steel plate got corroded and with the wood pro's application on the wooden box, not to the parent metal, how the steel plates remain intact. Eh? So this is again based on the advanced VC technology. So these are the solutions uh, we are using, uh, we are recommending widely for protecting the bare metal surfaces. Uh, as Krishna highlighted in one of the examples, uh, the ship spares, uh, okay, or the any of the spares which are stored on board, uh, we would recommend to use this technology to protect it because the one-time preservation until the part is taken for use on board, uh, okay it will remain without corrosion and thereby the spare will be available as and when required in good condition. Okay. So that's a, now there's a come on, coming as the, one of the storage solutions. Okay. One of the storage solutions as we indicated is the VC papers and the plastics. The other one is, okay, whenever you know, currently we know that many of the projects, okay, okay like particular like drilling rigs and all, Either they are completed, but they have not taken delivery by the client, or the project is getting delayed. And because of this, there are materials, particularly the non metals, eh, have the tendency to develop the mold and mildew on its surfaces when it is kept in the non air condition. And air conditioning is an expensive solution because you need to, it's a continuous consumption of the power and uh, power. And uh, this is also environmentally not uh, you know negative it will increase the carbon footprint of the production operations then what we have got is a solution called the mold god they mold god 301 
once this product is applied on top of the surface of the scan this ensures that no mold develops onto this uh, metal non metal surface of the scan whether it's a wood fabric leather okay what type of material it ensures that there is a no mold or uh, mold or mildew for years scan okay and thereby even despite the high humidity condition you don't have to worry about uh, doing any repair or a replacement of this product which are stored and this is of course also being recommended for the voyage when you want to have a unmanned voyage uh, that means where the air conditioning systems will not be running the use of this product will ensure that when the you know fpso or a drilling rig or a vessel is visited at the other end after the towing okay it is still will be in a good usable condition na right? without any repair or rework okay. now there are a few of the examples related to the repair or restoration solutions okay. one such example is that press we on the products okay this we have a they rust remover combined with the water god plus okay, which is used for the neutralizing and this is can be used on any ferrous metal okay whether it's a carbon steel or for stainless steel to remove the local contamination or aluminum or copper for removing the oxides okay for this particular solution from one of our clients for uh, you know rotary when they have done the uh, floating uh, roofs so the fixed roofs on the aluminum roofs they had the problem of the oxidation and uh, this could be product was used to completely eliminate those oxidation and restore the surface to the acceptable condition by the client okay and similarly there are other such uh, locations or you know where there is a bare metal corrosion is there we could use this rust remover with the dvc what shield plus okay, as a neutralizer okay this is always used as a pad okay, to ensure that the final surface is uh, removed uh, the rust is removed and also preserved this is a example of that aluminum cable trays in used in one of the yachts projects where they had the oxide issues while well, they could be used as a earlier after removing the oxides protected with the dvc eco glossy which is very dry and with this they could do their assembly and installation of the cable trays and the cable pulling without any corrosion contamination issue and in this case there is will be no necessity to do any pickling and passivation okay, of these uh, cable trays okay, any time in the future and there is a other example wherein there is a, a rust conversion you also used where the corrosion is very deep rooted okay. it's hard and quite expensive to remove such corrosion we recommend the use of this rust converter this converts this uh, into the you know st stable primed layer and this surface becomes suitable for a painting okay thereby the rust gets a converted so that it is no more a oxide where if you do the painting it will peel off okay it becomes a primed surface okay and with these examples of the various solutions okay? now we would like to highlight to these clients okay what we can offer as a company okay we are not just a product sellers we are a solution provider and as a solution provider we offer you an integrated package uh, wherein we diagnose the manufacturing process okay the right from the raw material to the final delivery and the whole process we review diagnose and we provide the recommendations these recommendations will include how to prevent and eliminate the repair and rework during the manufacturing stages that is one how to ensure that the product what you have delivered to the client you know in terms of packaging and the transportation there will be no repair and rework and more importantly what are all the manufacturing stages which are in your current process that can be eliminated so we are able to offer this okay, by studying your entire the production line okay. we will this recommendations are provided once those recommendations are provided we are able to provide whatever is required associated with these requirements okay. whether it's a preservation procedures 
the products the right, other solutions what is required so that our recommendations whatever has been given to implement that all the required inputs we are we will be providing to the clients yeah. once these are provided uh, in the manufacturing organizations we know that you have got your own technicians are there so what we do we train those technicians uh, okay, our crew to ensure that these people are made aware of the principles and the fundamentals of this and also how to use it and how to apply these products correctly because in one such case is uh, very interesting is that the spare parts was uh, you know uh, one of the clients had uh, you know uh, bought the vc paper used the vc paper and uh, initially they had a, they had a very positive results and suddenly they thought that uh, there is a product problem when the, then they said uh, despite using the vc paper they had the corrosion issues okay when we studied uh, we found that there was a change of the personnel who were doing the packaging and uh, the person who you he was not being transmitted the knowledge of how to do this because the vc paper has got there we see only in the unprinted page unprinted side of the paper the printed side there is no vca but unfortunately they wrapped up in the wrong side leading to the corrosion of the parts so to prevent such cases we ensure that we do the training of the technicians and we also recommend with the client's approval we recommend to do once in a quarter or a once in six months sir visit to the client's place and do a either a refresher training or to ensure that monitor review of the production processes to ensure that they follow the recommendations eh, as given originally due to the change of people or due to the loss of time there is no uh, pro, no uh, you know disruptions to the recommended solutions and where the client require us to do the execution some of the clients you know require us to do the preservation by ourselves then we use our engineers and the technicians to execute the same and finally whatever the jobs are completed we provide a complete documentation and also a certification for the jobs done where it is required to be certified by the classification society we arrange the same okay and all this once it is done where it is required by the client we do this monitoring for the manufacturing industries we do the monitoring by the process of audit we do that by as i said the quarterly or a by annual audit to ensure that the recommendations are being followed and the client is continuing to enjoy the low cost manufacturing as it was you know recommended and implemented in the initial stages so with this we would like to move to the conclusion session wherein we would like to highlight that an integrated approach for the preservation okay from the raw materials to the delivery will help every one of you to optimize and reduce the number of production activities because not very currently you know the individually raw material storage as a preservation separate part preservation as separate like when it is handled this benefit is getting lost and this is an area where we will be able to help all of you and uh, this will lead to the reduced cost of manufacturing that by increasing your competitiveness and the profitability reduced manufacturing time okay and uh, higher profitability as you know at this point of time the reduced manufacturing time is going to be very beneficial both for the companies like you and also your clients okay. then the other conclusion is that currently we have got the new technologies in preservation okay that can help you to reduce the carbon footprint of your production processes and currently as you know the esg performance okay environment and then the social responsibility and the governance the esg performance of the listed companies is one of the major monitors and also for the larger corporations and uh, the use of these latest technologies in preservation will help you to reduce your carbon footprint and achieve a better esg performance uh, leading to a higher company prestige and finally we confirm to you and we are able to confirm that it is possible to manufacture and deliver the plant and the equipment that are totally free from the rust and corrosion okay and we can help you to achieve this because currently there is a mindset uh, that if it is a carbon steel corrosion and rust is inevitable okay so 
this way but uh, this is the uh, old thinking and uh, this was the case for many decades but currently the latest development in the various technologies can help to achieve a completely rust and corrosion free okay asset and equipment and a plant okay and in this area by working together okay jointly we will be able to achieve such kind of the value added solutions to the clients yeah. i hope that uh, you know mano krishna and myself we are able to show you the some samples because uh, right now our objective is to show you that there are a set of technologies available there are methods or sort of product ranges are available with which uh, you will be able to reduce your current cost of production okay this is, and also able to reduce your current carbon footprint uh, of producing your end products this is what we want to show you the samples so that uh, you are able to raise your queries the, the contact information are available kindly feel free to reach out to us with your specific questions and the requirements we will be happy to support and achieve your objective of uh, higher profitability and reduced carbon footprint for those who are not decided in using these technologies or the solutions we will be happy to hear from you okay what are the your current type of the problems and uh, why this particular thing was not convincing enough because that we will be able to explain better okay if you are not done enough justice during this uh, webinar session so far okay with that i thank you all for the time you have spared okay? wish you all a great week ahead thank you